I'm, this is only, this is a short clip, so let's try. Uh, it's gonna be hard, but I'm gonna try to let, let it play here. Just now to talk about all of this and Gordon. Okay, look, they can talk and talk and talk. Does the U.S. look weak to Edward's point when they say we're not interested in decoupling from China? Well, well, certainly. You know, the Chinese have been engaging in dangerous and belligerent behavior, yeah. and if anybody should be trying to mend relations, it's the Chinese, but it's us. And really, what we're trying to do is, as we've heard, establish lines of communication. Well, we think we're responsible, but the Chinese see this as another vassal coming to the Grand Celestial Court to acknowledge its subordination to the yeah. Chinese. And, and things have gotten worse. Remember, our Secretary of State was there two and a half weeks ago mm -hmm. trying to do the same things. Things get worse. So I don't really see things getting better from our perspective. There are those who say you can't do Before this guy chime in, you guys see how crazy this guy is? He, he <laughs> considers Joe Biden's policy <laughs> On China and Taiwan week. I've now, seen this guy in many in another interview and he was terrible. Maybe he's the he's the guy to go to that slightly looks Asian. I think he's half Asian of some Asian descent that That's they can move on and, and really talk about it. That's what they really want to do. I've seen him in like at least two other interviews talking this madness about China before. Go ahead. So, so this is the administration that Fox News is painting as weak on China. <laughs> Biden administration approves potential 404, $440 million arms sale to Taiwan. The squad and Bernie Sanders are like, I'm down. They vote for the last arm package to Taiwan. The leftists in the PMC class, right? They support the, So according to the right wing, Biden is a, China, is a Chinese shill who is weak on China, and his weakness is causing the rise of China worldwide. That's the message they get it. Can, can you have Nancy Pelosi as well as Kevin McCarthy visiting That's, Taiwan. Yes, well, go ahead, go ahead, Zink, if you want to try, try man. Zink is no, it's just... I, no, he I, was I, just texting his camera. He had to come oh, back okay, out. Okay. He, he, yeah, he was just texting his camera. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so just feel free to interrupt me anytime. No, no worries, guys. But this is the administration they pay in as week on Taiwan. And remember what I, I told you guys, our media in the United States is the most propaganda country in the world because we are ruled by war criminal psychopaths, right? But the corporate media sees the, our war criminal psychopaths and they think they're pussy. Like the Fox News Anthony is a pussy. Like and, and we've seen this before in press conferences where Anthony Blinken be talking about Ukraine and in the press corps be like, Anthony Blinken, why aren't you doing more for Ukraine? And we like and they be legitimately flabbergasted. Like it's not like you know when they act, they I swear to God he's not acting when they he be like, Do you know what I have done? <laughs> Weapons I have sent to Ukraine, but he still gets grilled. And that's the same thing with China. They sent in millions, hundreds of millions of dollars of arms to Taiwan. They literally uh, escalating and doing military drills during the Taiwan Strait. The Biden has been one of the most anti-China regimes we have seen in my lifetime. But the corporate media is still saying, oh, you're a pussy. Y'all, right, why won't you do more against China? So as bad as our politicians, politicians are, I want you guys to know our media is more War, yeah. war criminal, more bloodthirsty than they are. What does that say? But I think that was Zinkas. I can't see you guys, but Zinkas, if you want to chime in, or anyone, feel free. Um, this, this this is a short story. Uh, I think we pretty much, yeah, I think we we can write the story. We I got one more I can do. So I, okay. I think, I, actually, let's finish it. We finished the Fox News segment. Actually, uh, yeah, yeah, that's the part. Yeah, that, let's finish yeah, that let, clip. Let's finish the clip. They say, they say some more stuff here. They say some more yeah, stuff let, here. We finished the clip, and I'll give you guys thoughts, and we can move on just for a second time. So I'll rewind it just a little bit. Let's continue. I'll let it play all the way through. gotten worse. Remember, our Secretary of State was there two and a half weeks ago mm -hmm. trying to do the same things. Things get worse. So I don't really see things getting better from our perspective. There are those who say you can't decouple from China with a two, two entangled. Um, and that, uh, on the same angle of that, you could say that China needs us more than we need them. Correct. Well, certainly their economy. They what? What does that statement even mean? So you gotta know. We, you gotta know. He's just talking about nonchalantly. He nonchalantly talking about destroying the global working class. Well, it's he, important like, to understand. Go ahead, go ahead. He did. He did say it with a British accent, which makes us pay attention and think he knows what the hell he's talking about. He no I want to throw something out, which I think is important, just to rewind. Although it has absolutely everything to do with what we're saying now. I think people who don't know need to be aware who Elliot Abrams is and how he represents the murderous genocidal side of U.S. colonialism. The policies of the United States toward Central America, 
specifically El Salvador, Guatemala, and Nicaragua. Elliot Abrams was one of the chief engineers through the 1980s and beyond. Indigenous brown people were murdered by death squads trained. This was his policy and Oliver North's trained in the former School of the Americas, which used to be in Georgia. We trained these troops who assassinated a Roman Catholic Archbishop, Oscar Romero, who was saying mass because he called for peace. We, Elliot Abrams was the one of the architects, the chief architects of a policy where they blew up bridges, schools, hospitals, and roads where they would drag 12-year-old boys out of villages and force them at gunpoint to either join the army or be shot in the head. The, the, the people Elliot Abrams was responsible for training in November of, I believe it was 1989, death squads that they trained assassinated a radical socialist arch... Um, Jesuit priest, two of them, who were radical priests. They were good ones. Their cook, who was indigenous to El Salvador, and her 15-year-old daughter shot them in the head, scooped out their brains, and laid them next to their bodies. This is Elliot Abrams, and he was convicted of felonies for lying to Congress and covering it up. He is a criminal, convicted in the United States, pardoned by George Bush, but still a criminal, a war criminal, and a racist, and an imperialist. We have done far worse in our hemisphere than China has done. China hasn't done this in Taiwan. I mean, you go back in history, of course there have been wars. But in the past 40 years, 50 years, when we've done this policy in Central America, it's not a mistake that Joe Biden supported those wars, too, in Central America. It's not a mistake that Biden chose Elliot Abrams. They're probably friends. People need to understand what this, what this means. Look up what happened with Iran-Contra, where the Reagan administration, probably directed by George H.W. Bush, with Oliver North and Elliot Abrams, had a policy of genocide against um, brown people in Central America. And yeah. they killed tens of thousands of them. 30,000 indigenous people native to Salvador were murdered in like a year by these death squads that we trained. 30,000. China's not done that. So not only don't we have the moral high ground here, we are literally an out of control warmongering empire and Biden appointing Abrams is a signal. This is yeah. who I am. Republicans are happy with it, but this is serious. That Reagan, what he did is what, when I started reading about it, is what radicalized me. How could we have a president that does this? And now the Democratic Party is doing it. And they want war with China. How's that going to go on? How's it's that not going to go well? At, it's not going to go well at all. And yelling, these visits with yelling and blinking and everything have not been well at all. And they just not have been turning out well. But but go ahead, Nick, if you want. to. And, and I explained this before, their strategy, uh, their uh, strategic ambiguity. You will never see this mentioned in the corporate media, but this is U.S. policy, where they send diplomats in their official statement is we support Taiwan. I'm mm -hmm. uh, sorry, we support one China policy and we support t Taiwan being part of China. And that's why they send diplomats. They said, we got to respect this policy. We want re we want to restore relationship with, with China. As they are doing that, they're sending weapons to Taiwan. As they are doing that, Nancy Pelosi and uh, Kevin McCarthy is in Taiwan. So it's meant to confuse. It meant as a propaganda campaign. So they can say, oh, we're doing our best part. China is just, is just overreacting as they are literally escalated doing military drills on the Chinese Strait. So let's let's continue this video uh and, and wrap the segment up. I got one more short segment I want to cover before I, I before I bounce out. 
So I rewind it just a little bit more, and then we can finish the segment all the way through. I don't really see things getting better from our perspective. There are those who say you can't decouple from China. With a two, too entangled. Look, um, this guy's crazy. I have no idea what he's talking the about. Same angle of that you could say that china needs us more than we need them correct well certainly their economy mean? they said grew 4.5 percent in q1 but probably one or two mm -hmm. and it's gotten worse since then and xi jinping's policies because he's basically state dominated economy state dominated society just driving things worse which is the reason why we have all of these chinese migrants surging across our southern border which and by the way ash those are not what? Poor people. Have no what? idea what what are you to talking about 35000 dollars a head to pay to the cartels to, to smuggle them into the us it's remarkable uh, what? we're getting a lot of tit for tat we still have the tariffs in place they're saying we're not going to export any more of these two rare earth uh, materials that are very important in semiconductor manufacturing I mean, does that just continue? Is that just business as normal? It feels like it. Well, it is tit for tat. But, you know, we shouldn't panic because the Chinese tried this in 2010 with the Japanese by putting on these export bans on rare earths. Mm. And by the way, the Chinese effort collapsed. Chinese state enterprises surreptitiously sold those rare earths to the Japanese. And if the Japanese couldn't buy them directly from China, they got them from other parties. We can do the same thing. And very quickly, you know, the, the, you mentioned this. The State Department has a travel warning to Americans going to China because of, you know, uh, being detained for basically no reason at all. And yet here we are, Janet Yellen landing in Beijing, smiling, shaking hands. Yeah, this is ironic. You have that level three travel advisory. Yeah. The Chinese are taking hostages. And then she goes there. So, you know, this is really bad policy on our part. So, once again, that this is objectively not true. Like, we've just seen photos of Danny Haifong in China. Is he being detained? Yeah. <laughs> we, I knew multiple professors that had European backgrounds from China during the International Leftist Coalition. Chinese prof yes. professors. There's... there's there's Americans in China all the time. Like, and, but once again, they don't have to tell the truth. They just want you to be afraid of China for some reason. 